Ryan reporting live from Van Nistelrooy Elementary. In 2018, North Korea and South Korea will be teaming up as Just Korea. They haven't done anything like this since the Korean War, which was over 60 years ago. South Korea will be hosting the Winter Olympics this year. South Korea is calling the Olympics the Peace Games because they believe they are at peace with North Korea. Let's hope this is the first step in peace for the Koreas. Thank you for tuning in today. Avery reporting live from Winsolier Elementary School on March 4th, 2018 in Indianapolis, Indiana. Shaquan Griffin made history. He was at the Combines trying to get in the NFL. Griffin only has one hand, but is yet still said to go in the fourth round. I don't think he'll go in the fourth round. I think he will go in the first and second round. His stats were 2,225-pound 20, 20, reps, 9'9 nine, nine in the broad jump, and in the 40-yard dash, 4.38. That is fast for a linebacker. Griffin is a good role model and a good leader. He has a brother named Shaquille Griffin. He plays for the Seattle Seahawks. He also used to be a safety. Him and his brother both went to UCF. They wanted to go to the same school. This just proves you can do anything no matter what, even though you have a disability. Christian, coming to you live from Rensselaer, Indiana. In mid-December 2017, Adidas designed a shoe that they think makes you jump higher, run faster. Here are the reasons why this might help you. Its flexibility and cushioning makes it so when you jump from a high place, you can absorb the impact and then leap higher. Also, if you run in them, they are tailored to your feet. If you get a pair, they're going to scan your feet and it's going to take around two hours to make. Right now, plans are in place for the shoe to be manufactured sometime in 2019. Brian, reporting live from Rensselaer Elementary School. In 1969, NASA went to the moon. But people think it's fake because of these facts that I want to tell you. So here are facts that support why it's fake. There are these things called the Van Allen belts. The Van Allen belts are belts surrounding the Earth that are filled with radiation that can destroy the human body. If we go through them, we can die. When Neil Armstrong put the flag down, it started flapping, but there isn't no, but there's no air in the moon, so how could that happen? The other reason why this, the landing of the moon could be fake, is that the shadows are not parallel, so there could be another light source like a studio light. The other reason why this could be fake, is that there's a lot. If you look closely, there's a letter C on the rock. So that could be a prop or something that they put there. Which side are you on? In reporting live from Van Elementary School. Do you think robots are possible? People have their own opinions about it, but it was proven on October 26, 2016, when Sophia, the first human robot, was made. Sophia has been on many TV shows and news articles. Sophia was made in Saudi Arabia to assist seniors in public places like parks. Sophia is able to communicate with humans or even other robots. Many people like Sophia because they feel if we have more robots like her, it'll make the world easier. Hello, this is Rodog. On October 2017, ecologist Adam Rosenblatt discovered a stingray in an alligator's mouth. Stingrays live in salty waters, so this concludes that alligators are going into salty waters. Now that's a crafty gator. Science hasn't found this out because alligator food digests quickly. It turns to mush within minutes. <clears throat> Scientists are studying this because this can totally mess up the Australian food web. If it continues, people have special equipment to study gators up close and personal. This is Lane, reporting from Van Rensselaer. When geologists from the University of Toronto thought they had hit a jackpot in Kid Mine, Ontario, Canada in 2013, but they found water that has been locked in the Earth's crust for at least two billion years. The geologists know the age because of the various gases, helium, ergon, neon, criton, and exon in this ancient liquid. The geologist took a sample of the water and there was sulfur in this water. 
they found the sulfur was coming from the rock around it. Researchers think that aliens live in this ancient water and used it. They feel the aliens may have been fish-like. Jenica, reporting live from Van Rensselaer Elementary School. Today we'll be talking about a beach in Ireland that for 33 years was covered in rock and tide pools. And 33 years later, it magically reappeared. Keep in mind that the way a beach is made is when there's a lot of rocks by a lot of water and the water rubs against the rocks over and over and makes them so small they turn into sand. In all seriousness, a bunch of waves kept hitting the rock on the shore and rubbing against them over and over for 10 days. It happened for so long it broke the rocks down into sand and there was beach again. Brian reporting live from Ontario Elementary Schools. Scientists finally revealed the real truth about the Titanic. While well, journalist Simon de Molle studied the Titanic over 30 years, he found a 30-foot black spot on the ship. It, it was fire that caused the Titanic crash. It was burning at a high temperature for three weeks, and it weakened the metal more than 75%. The management knew about the fire, but they did not want to cancel the trip. If they canceled the trip, they wouldn't be sailing for a long time. So when the Titanic sailed off, the iceberg hit right on the spot it weakened and the Titanic sank. Now I hope that gives you a better idea that the fire and the iceberg sank the ship, not just the iceberg. Hey, this is Ava from Van Elementary School. Have you heard of someone that is afraid of balloons? This is called globophobia. Globophobia is a thing when you get scared of balloons. Most of the time, people that have globophobia freak out at birthday parties, fairs, carnivals, and anywhere a balloon is seen. If you're around a balloon when it pops and you're scared of balloon, you might start sweating, shaking, you might feel like you need to throw up, and you might even breathe hard. Some people are scared of the way a balloon smells, but most people are afraid of the loud pop noise and the way it feels. Not very many people suffer from this. Aid reported live from Minnesota, Indiana. Do you know that there is a dangerous chemical in Minamata, Japan that can harm people? Well, this chemical is called methyl mercury, and this factory called the Chisel Corporation was pouring the methyl mercury into the bay back in the 1950s. So, with this terrible disease does your body, it weakens your body, and it also damages your vision, hearing, and speaking. It also bends your fingers and feet. People who have this disease need help eating. It can sadly also affect a pregnant woman with this terrible disease. The first person that experiences Minamata disease was Shizuko Tanaka. Her and her family sat down to eat the fish that was poisoned. Well, the next morning she was unable to walk, see, or even speak. Sadly, methyl mercury is still in the bays of many parts of Japan, which means the fish are still getting poisoned and people are still eating the fish. I hope you learned something important today. Ryan reporting live. Have you ever solved a Rubik's Cube? Most people think cubing is hard, but stay here to find out that looks can be deceiving. 15-year-old Colin Burns solved a Rubik's Cube in 5.25 seconds, and he set a record for the fastest single solve where you just solve one cube. But the record for average solve is held by a 19-year-old in Australia. If you don't know what an average solve is, it's where you solve five cubes and your three best times is your average. Colin wants people to know that cubing isn't as hard as it looks and you can do it too. Colin solved the cube by using a method where you solve the bottom of the cube and then use algorithms to solve the rest of the cube by messing some of the cube up. So remember, you can do it. Thank you for tuning in. 
On October 23, 2007, Brittany Exline graduated at age 13 at University of Pennsylvania. Brittany started reading when she was only two years old. She flung through sixth or eighth grade quickly and made it to high school. She graduated from there and had big plans for college. Brittany loves math, science, and politics. She decided to get a joint degree in engineering and liberal arts. Today, Brittany is a freshman at prestigious University of Pennsylvania and she has a full scholarship. But now, can you see why she is called a genius? Emily, reporting live from Van Rensselaer Elementary School. Today I'm going to be talking about Shannon Wilson. She is an author and a third grade teacher. Her books are children's books. Some of them are written about things that actually happen, and some are are about things that may interest children or kids. Coasting Casey is about a kid that daydreams in class and gets bored and doesn't do his best. The teacher tells him that he's good enough. Also, he doesn't apply himself into school. Penelope Perfect is about Penelope, and she has to have everything be perfect. Vulture and Hummingbird is about a vulture that is always grumpy. The Hummingbird is a person that is happy. Hummingbird wants to become Vulture's friend. I Am Not a Pirate is about a girl that has to get used to wearing an eye patch and be confident about it. Nick and Chug It is about Cooper and he has to work at a restaurant as a waiter, but he has tongue tangled. I got permission to interview Shannon Anderson and she said this. I was around children's books, and I fell in love with them and wanted to write those kinds of books. It takes years or months to make a book. The shortest book I have ever written was in a couple of months. The longest was three years. It takes a while to get it approved and published. It is challenging to write a book because when you write it, mostly every time it needs to be edited. She was working on a book that needed to be edited when she thought she was done. She wrote a chapter book about her daughter. It hasn't been published yet, though. When she quits or retires from teaching, she'll be a full-time writer.